All right, so in this week's guitar lesson, we're gonna talk about playing chord changes and how you can do that when you improvise. You can just make this stuff up on the fly and it's not as difficult as you might think. So everything that I just played was all improvised. I did four or five different versions of it, different takes. Some of them, actually most of them had mistakes in them, so I kept the one that didn't. Um, but that's not the point. The point is that you can do this and this is all using basic things that you already know. So we're not gonna get into theory or anything that's confusing. We're gonna be uh, talking really more visually. So if you're a visual learner, you'll like this, but it's seeing these chord shapes on the fretboard and it's taking the pentatonic scales, which you already know, and kind of mixing the two, mixing those two ideas. And once you can do that, you can start pulling the notes out of those chords as they pass by. So I have this lesson split into two parts. In this video, we're gonna go through the first half of everything. If you'd like to watch the second half, download the tablature, download the MP3 jam track, and get all of those extra materials so that you can practice playing everything we're gonna talk about. You can get those things by going to activemelody.com go to the weekly lessons page and do a search for EP 533. All right, so this song that we're gonna be playing is in the key of A, and it's a really basic jam track. I mean, it's basically just a one, four, five chord progression. There is a minor uh, six chord that's thrown in there, but the first chords is gonna be an A, and then it goes to a D. So that's gonna be our first transition, uh, transitioning from the A to the D, and what we play in that transition. And then we go back to the A, and then we go to the five chord, which is our E, or E7. And so that's the first group of chords we're gonna look at. Let's listen to the first part and then we'll talk about it. All right, so the first thing we're gonna play over is that A chord. And I just played basically minor pentatonic stuff. That's the first little thing we're gonna look at. And it really starts here on the seventh fret, second string, and I do a half bend. So I'm bending up to the eighth fret, second string. Now let's get our bearings here. So let's think of our A chord using the E shape. What is our minor pentatonic scale pattern that's in this area? We have pattern one, right? The one that we all know. So that's uh, what I'm, where I'm at. Uh, um, and so I started on that seventh fret, which isn't in that. That's actually a note that's from your major pentatonic scale. And so when I do that, I'm blending really from the major to the minor. That's the only place that I'm really doing that, just on that one note. But I wanted to kind of call that out if you're wondering why I'm starting on the seventh fret. That's what's going on there. Uh, I'll put a lesson up on the screen if you want more information about blending the major and minor pentatonic scale. So we do that half bend, then we release it, and then come down to the fifth fret second string. And then I'm gonna bar with my index finger on that fifth fret first string and play kind of a Chuck Berry lick. So I'm keeping that bar on the fifth fret, strings one and two, and then I'm gonna do a full bend on the seventh fret, third string, and then. All right, let's back this up from the beginning. And remember, this comes in on the two. So when you get out the jam track and you hear the click at the beginning, uh, you don't come in right on the beat, you come in on the second beat. So it's one, two, three, four, one, two. Now after this, so we're gonna go, and then we're gonna come back to the second string, and then come to this eighth fret second string, do a full bend, and then match that note on the fifth fret first string, and then we're gonna go eighth fret second string without the bend to the fifth fret second string. So let's put that together. We have one, two, All right, so we haven't done anything clever yet, no chord changes yet, but now the song is about to go to the D chord. And I'm just playing this A minor pentatonic scale stuff, but when the D chord happens, I went So I walked it up. And that's a little chromatic walk up there, which means you're hitting every note along the way. So it's fifth, sixth, seventh on the second string. And here's where I'm at mentally. So I'm picturing, remember we're playing over the D chord now, this, the jam track went to the D. I'm picturing my D chord right in that same neighborhood using the A shape. You're always asking yourself, where's my near, you know, wh what's in my neighborhood here, right? So um, there's my A shape and then there's the top part of that A shape, which is here. Now remember that's a D chord, but that's what it looks like. And if you can picture that, then this makes sense to go 
what we're about to do here. And those notes are coming out of that D chord, which is why they sound good. They, there's a perfect fit. So from the beginning, we have. Right? And you can already hear, even without the jam track, you can hear that the song is now switched chords. And then I played. Little embellishment off of that with a nice little rake there. So it's uh, barring the first two strings on the fifth fret, and you do a hammer on to the seventh fret, second string. That's a great takeaway. If you get nothing else, there's your D chord using the A shape. Look at the top part of that. Got this little pedal steel thing that you can, it's a lick that you can attach to that chord. And then I do a pull. That's actually a rake where I'm doing an upstroke, strings one, two, and three. So that's that bar there on the fifth fret, and then my ring finger comes back to the seventh fret, third string. And then that last note that I landed on was the fifth fret, uh, third string, which is in our minor pentatonic, so it has a bluesier sound. So then the song goes back to the A chord, and I played. Let's look at that. So that's just a harmonized sixth, and here's what I'm picturing when I play that. I'm not thinking about a scale, I'm thinking about chord shapes. Okay, I've got my A chord here, right? Using the E shape. Oh, I've got another one up here, using the, that D shape, or the C shape, however you want to think of it. That D triad is in both the D shape and the C shape. That always confuses people. But it's, think of your D chord you learned in first position. Play it up here where you've got your ring finger on the ninth fret first string. Now you don't need to play the full chord, we're just gonna play strings one and three of that chord. Ah, that little harmonized sixth, that represents my A chord, because it's two of the notes from my A chord. But I started a half step down, and played it like that. Now I'm hybrid picking, so I'm picking with my pick on the third string, and I'm using my ring finger to pluck on the first string. And then this next set of notes all happen on the first string. Well, actually, not that one. That one's on the second string. But everything other than that one, that's all on the first string. And let me show you the notes first. So it's 10th fret, down to the 9th fret. And then we slide from the 10th up to the 12th. And then we come down to the 8th and do a hammer on to the 9th. So it's. And then that last note is on the 10th fret, second string. What is that? Where is that coming from? So remember, we're playing over the A part of the song, right? So I was thinking about my A minor pentatonic scale pattern two. Right, but it didn't sound minor pentatonic scale. That's because I went like this. I hit this note, which is my third. If I went like this. It would sound minor, but since I went like this, I didn't do the flat third. And so I just remember this inside of pattern two. Here's a little takeaway. Inside of it on the first string, you've got your third, your major third. That may not seem like a big deal to some of you, but to some of you, that's a big deal. And when I realized that, I remember just being blown away that, oh yeah, I've got my minor, my Albert King stuff, but I've also got that major right inside of there. So, so that's where that lick is coming from. All right, so now the song goes to the E chord, which is our five chord. And so what I ended up doing was basically kind of what I did over the D chord. Remember the D chord, we, we played out of this shape, right? The top part of the A shape. Well, the, our E chord, we could do the same thing. We can use that same shape. There's my E chord using the A shape. There's the top part of it. So that's what I did. 
I just played strings one and two. So hopefully you're starting to realize these harmonies, it's not like you're sitting there studying theory and looking at what notes fit in every scale. It doesn't work like that. That's not really the way that improvising works when it comes down to actually doing it. Now that may be what's going on behind the scenes and can explain it all, but that's not, you can't, your brain can't process, or at least mine can. I have to think this way. I have to think more, you know, like shapes like this. So, and I think that's probably true of most improvisers we get our our bag of tricks and licks and things we can we we go back to them that's why we do it so after this came to the ninth fret and then up to the 12th fret and then watch this so 12th fret first string and then we come down to the third string and do a slide from the 12th to the 11th fret and then down to the ninth and then that's the 11th fret fourth string but what is that well that is this will blow you away, some of you. This is major pentat... Remember, we're playing over the E chord, right? So my E major pentatonic scale is right here. So that's what that's why that sounds so good, because we're, it's matching with the chord. So like the timing of that goes like that. And then I do another little rake here inside of that major pentatonic scale pattern one. So that's barring the first three strings on the ninth fret, but we're only going to play strings two and three. Do a hammer on to the, uh, uh, to the 11th fret, third string. And then a rake where I do an upstroke on strings two and three. And then I come down here to the 11th fret, uh, fourth string and hit that. And then that last note is the ninth fret third string. So it's, that's how it sounds. But all of that represents my E chord. And hopefully that the light bulb went off for somebody out there as you realize, oh yeah, here's my E chord using the A shape. Here it is using the G shape. And, and they both share that same little triad. And that major pentatonic scale pattern one is right there. Well, remember, if you want the extra materials for this, you can go to activemelody.com and go to the weekly lessons page and do a search for EP533. You can get the jam track and the tablature and everything that we talked about. All right, we'll see you next week for something new.